All right, welcome to a tutorial on audio players. This is the plugin that we can use to play audio in Flutter. Um, so let's get right into it. Here is the pub.dev page for this. So it's audio players with an S. I believe there's actually a package without the S, so just be careful there. It's audio players, plural, is the one that we're gonna use here. And it's a pretty simple plugin to just play audio from assets or from um, assets meaning files or from a URL if it's hosted somewhere like that. Uh, so in my tutorial, I've added a song as an asset in the assets folder. And um, yeah, we're just gonna be able to play and stop and pause that, um, that audio and then react to it in our UI. And I'll show you how I've done that. Um, so one thing to be aware of, the, aware of is that this plugin actually has a fair number of issues on their GitHub. Um, there are quite a few bugs. And one of them that you're gonna run into immediately with Android is that you must change the Kotlin version uh, you do this in Android build.gradle. Um, so you must make it what he's put here uh, it, or else it just doesn't work whatsoever. I've never actually had to do this for a different plugin. So just be aware that in this file right here, the Android level build.gradle, you're going to need to change your Kotlin version from what Flutter create puts there. Um, there are, are also a couple issues with some of the methods with it, but overall still the plugin is quite good and quite easy to use. It's not a big deal. You know, there's lots of bugs and lots of stuff, but uh, we'll get into how to work around those in a second. So yeah, let's get into the what I've got here. So I got an app here. I'm not sure how this is gonna sound on the recording, but basically plays a song. You can pause and stop, and it's also got a progress bar, which reports back the percentage of the song that has been played so far. So you can see that uh, progress bar going there. And then if I hit stop, it resets progress and restarts the song. So let's get into how I did that. So here's the audio asset player. This is a class that I wrote to wrap the classes from audio players, the main one being audio player here. And then also we're gonna use audio cache and we're gonna use audio cache for the ones that live in our assets folder. So if you wanna add a song, you can just put it into assets here, uh, put the raw file right in there, and then you just have to remember in your pub spec to add everything in the assets folder and everything nested under it into uh, here, and then hit pub get so that um, they can be found. So once you've done that, uh, you'll be able to load up that file there. So this, this class just takes in a file name, so that is the song.mp3, and it's got quite a few different async things going on here with stream subscriptions and um, stream controllers. So uh, with the audio, it reports back the progress that it's played as a duration. Um, so the duration Dart class that you can express with um, that, like right here. And then also it has a getter to get the int of the amount of milliseconds for the total duration. So that's what we're gonna use to transform that into a percentage that a progress bar expects. So the progress bar which it expects a number from zero to one, a double. Um, so we're gonna have to map that progress out on this stream so that every single time that progress changes We can call set state and then get that progress bar to react there So the way that I've done that is with a stream controller So here is the stream controller and it's private. So this is the one for the progress and what that is going to use is a um, Stream subscription to one of the methods on the audio player. Uh, so that's the audio player here We're just gonna set it once so these things are late final and then the stream subscription to the progress there. And then also uh, we're gonna look up the duration of the song so that we have that saved. And then there's also a player state, which is an enum, and player state has stopped playing, paused, and completed. Um, so I didn't bother uh, redefining this enum or anything, I'm just outputting that stream right from the auto audio player to the UI. So that these buttons can light up based on the state of it, right? So right now it's paused, so the pause button can't be pressed. So I'll show you how in main I've done that with uh, with some components logic there. So the first thing we gotta do is initialize this and audio player is the class that actually has like play, pause, resume. Uh, but to play a audio from assets, you actually need to use a class called audio cache. And this class is a bit odd because um, you have to start off by just playing it. So we go play file name, and then that returns us after we await it, gives us a future audio player. Um, so this uh, play method and audio cache assume 
that you can see there, there's a prefix of assets slash. So if your music lives in anything other than assets slash, you're gonna to need to provide a prefix so that it's gonna find the correct file. But if you have just everything at assets in a top level, um, then that works just fine. So that gives us our audio player. And then next thing I'm gonna do is look up that duration of the song. So this is where one of the first issues that I ran into with this plugin here is that um, audio player dot get duration if you call it really quickly after getting it ready, it will just return zero for the duration or throw an exception. Um, so I on their GitHub issues, I've seen that a lot of people hack this by putting a delay in between setting it up and getting the duration. Now this is just awful because there's absolutely no guarantee that this is going to work. This just is something that seems to work for me and I haven't run into a crash since I've had this delay. But you don't really want to have to add hacks like this. Um, so this is just one, one issue that might you know, maybe you'd want to look up a different source for playing audio and flutter, uh, but it's not a huge deal. So we, we put this delay so that get duration returns us the correct duration. And I save that to that variable there at the end. Get duration is not documented, but this returns you the total milliseconds of the audio as an integer instead of a duration. Um, so the other thing that's a little bit weird is to create this audio player, we have to create it with the play method. There's no other method. So as soon as we create it, it starts playing, which isn't really what we want because we want the user to explicitly start playing it. So as soon as I create it, I call stop. Um, so then once I've stopped it, uh, then we, the user, whoever, you as a developer, can choose when you want that to start playing. So I found that a little bit odd, so I play it and immediately stop it so that it's like stopped at the zero position. So on my progress uh, stream controller, I'm adding the initial state of zero. So 0% 0 of the song is played. And then I'm setting up a stream subscription to the audio position change. So I've also seen some issues, although I didn't run into it on Android, that sometimes this does not fire any events on iOS. So just, you're gonna have to test this out on iOS um, for your own project if you wanna use this. I actually didn't try it out. I just saw some issues on GitHub. But anyways, audio player gives us an on audio position changed, and that is a stream of durations. Uh, so that fires roughly every 200 milliseconds and it will continuously update the playback status. So on change on that, uh, what I really care about, not the duration that it's played, is for this card, I care about a percentage of that is to completion, right? So the completion percentage uh, from zero to one is the current amount, so the, the amount that's piped out by this stream, and it's du uh, divided by the audio duration, the total duration. So um, once it reaches the end, then this will be one, and it'll be 100% done. Um, so I'm just mapping that to my own stream there, uh, stream of doubles. Uh, one thing to watch out for that is if this audio duration returns you zero, which it sometimes does incorrectly, you're gonna divide by zero here, and that's going to probably cause a crash somewhere else when um, this is infinity or not a number. Um, so yeah, be, be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, this delay seems to make it work okay. Um, so yeah, that's the initialize. So we're gonna have to initialize it before we can do anything like play, pause, whatever. And there's also this dispose method because we got streams and we got a controller. So the audio player itself, you need to dispose of it. And then I also have subscriptions and stream controllers. So I gotta close both of those as well. And then we got some just the real methods that are just forwarded basically the play, pause, and reset. So play is actually resume because we've started it by playing it and then stopping it immediately. Um, but these are the methods that the UI actually uses here for play, pause, and stop. Um, so when I stop it, I found that it doesn't reliably pipe out that it's 0% done, like zero duration. So I'm just adding that to my own stream controller here as well and resetting that to the initial state. Okay, so let's look at how that's used in main. So I haven't really like split this up into different components or any kind of state management. I'm just using state set state for this example. So we got main and it runs my app. This is pretty much what Flutter Create gives you as default. And then the home page uh, is where everything lives right now. So I make my player here with the file name. So the file name is song.mp3. And then I need my UI to also subscribe to the different things. So the one thing that needs to subscribe to and update the screen every time it changes is the progress. And the other one is the state. So if we hit run, um, then that player state is gonna change to running. Uh, so the initial player state I've set as stopped because we just, we know that from the, how I've designed the player. And the initial progress is also zero, um, zero out of one, zero percent. 
and I'm going to save the future for the initializing here. Um, the reason that we're going to do that is because I've just put it in a future builder, nothing too complicated down there, but it's best to save a reference to these future for future builders. So in init state, I got, I'm setting up my uh, future so that my future builder can um, await that basically. So we're going to player and then initialize. And then once initialize is done, I don't need the result of that because it's void, but then we set up our stream subscriptions immediately after. So the two stream subscriptions are both really simple. We're just listening to the progress, which is a number from zero to one and calling set state every time that changes. And the same thing here, whenever the state changes, meaning playing, paused, resumed, whatever, um, then we're going to call set state there as well. Um, so then we got to dispose of our player when we're done with it. And keep in mind, this player is actually my player class, the audio asset player. This is not the one from the plugin. This is my wrapper. Sorry if that's a little bit confusing. Okay, so now we're into the screen. So we got just the app bar and the centered card here. So I put this in a future builder because we don't want to be able to hit run and pause and whatever before it's done. So here is the future that it's using. It's the init future. And you might be wondering why I save a reference to this future instead of just calling initialize right here. And the reason is, is because this is executed every single time the screen, uh, every time this future builder is rebuilt, which would cause issues if you're calling it here, because then you'd be calling init over and over again. Um, so that's why this is saved as a reference. So it's only set up once in init state. So here we have the builder. So I've, I haven't done much for the loading screen because it loads uh, in 200 milliseconds due to that delay, but it just has the text of loading. But once that connection state, this is an async snapshot of void. Once that's done, meaning it's initialized, then we're gonna build our card here that we see. So the card is really simple. It's just a column with the file name and then the play pause stop. And then the linear progress indicator with the progress that is going to be called in set state here from our stream. So I got methods for the play, pause, and stop. So let's look at the play button first. So if it's already playing, then I return a grayed out version of this button and I put on pressed as null. And what on pressed null does is it means it doesn't get the splash um, animation when you inkwell, sorry. And also, um, yeah, just does nothing. So it's like a disabled button. But if it is not playing, uh, then we can hit play. And then that just forwards that on pressed is player.play. <clears throat> The stop button is really similar. If we're already stopped, then you can't stop. So you can see that. Um, so it's again the disabled icon button. And then here we have a um, the real button has player.reset. So that's called when you hit the red button there. And then the pause button is almost identical again, except when it's playing, um, we only want it to be a pause button when it's actually playing. So here is disabled for any other state. And that just forwards us to player.pause. So yeah, we can see how these state uh, streams are going to get used in our UI. So like when we hit play, both of these streams are going to be have out, uh, events output to them. So the first one is the state stream. So when we hit this, our player, uh, player state is going to change to player state dot running. And then the progress is going to get piped out a whole bunch of times after. So yeah, I hope you like this tutorial on audio player. It's not a super complicated thing to do to play audio with this plugin. It's really quite easy to use, but I would be cautious about getting too attached to it due to some of these issues here. If you can find a better alternative, um, maybe that would be better. I'm going to also look for some other ways to play audio in Flutter because I wasn't quite satisfied with this. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind when you're evaluating plugins, you know, like not everything's perfect and things have bugs. Uh, it's just kind of part of developing is you don't want to just depend on things blindly. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed.